Years ago, when I was in the Navy, I would pray for calm weather and mild seas. Now that I live along the Treasure Coast, all I want is bad weather. Thursday through Tuesday, hazardous sporting and dangerous surf conditions are expected into the upcoming weekend as winds, and seas increase from high pressure strengthening along the eastern seaboard. A prolonged period of rough and high surf could lead to minor to moderate beach erosion and minor coastal flooding, especially during times of high tide from Thursday through Sunday. does change twice a day. You know, with the waves coming in and, you know, the winds, you know, depending on which direction they come, that every tide, every high tide, when that tide leaves, you know, the beach changes. Here's an example. You know, you look at the beach there, it's just cut, you know, the, it's cut down, you know, and even the stairs are hanging up there in, in nowhere. Uh, three or four days later, this is what it looks like. All that sand's come back in. Look at those stairways. Look at how much sand that that ocean has moved in that short period of time. And I used to really think that the key time to be out there was at low tide. And now I'm beginning to believe that you should be there quite a bit before low tide and follow that tide down before a chance to, the waves have got a chance to drop all that, that extra sand and covering up what we're looking for. What we're looking at now is what I call a rip tide or a bowl. It, you know, it's formed by rip tides. And what's happened is the waves washes out, back out to sea. It creates a current and it's bringing, dragging that sand out with it and it's washing it down to where we get down to where the original sand is, and that's where you're gonna find the good stuff. You know, one of the things you should look for, too, when you're out there, when you get to a, you know, look up and down the beach, look for that low area. When you see a low area, head for that. Carry your detector, I mean, don't waste your time walking down to the low area. When you get to the low area, detect. But if you see the black sand, it actually looks like oil is washed in or something like that, that's a good area. That's, you know, stop and work that and work that slowly because that's where your stuff is going to be hiding. But you should have a good detector when you're in that black sand because that's highly mineralized. So when you work that, go slow, very slow. You notice when I talked about black sand earlier, I'm right in the black sand and right up against the cut. And that's where I found that first real. At, uh, and then later, as I got about mid-beach down there, I found a small gold ring, and as I got to the water's edge, I found that second uh, real. So it, what I guess I'm trying to say is don't get locked into any one particular thing. There's several things that can happen out there. You just look for the clues and try to put them together. See, that's what dreams are made of, folks. You know, that's that Spanish coin. It hasn't been held for over 300 years. You know, that's a big thrill. That's history right there. There's a lot of people out there every day looking for that. And it's there. You know, you've walked over a ton of it. But you have to be at the right place at the right time. Another thing that I hadn't talked about is when you get to a low area, at the lowest point as you dig down, you're going to run into a light-colored sand that looks just like, you know, orange sand. That's your original sand. Boy, stop and work that one really slow. Go very, very slow. In fact, when you're done, turn around and go up just uh, crossways. I mean, just go back and forth over that. That orange sand holds the good stuff. When I see that, I just get really excited. And I'm willing to spend the time to, to you know, dig a deep hole, you know, and rather than lose that target because it could be pretty good. And it has proven pretty good in the past. When you're down into that original sand and you dig down and you get these sinkers, uh, if the sinker is a whitish color, that means it's been down there a long time. And when you find these heavy wet sinkers, work that area very slow. That's where the gold is. Gold is very heavy. Sinkers, the lead is very heavy. When you're into that area, uh, you know, stay there. Take your time. You know, that's where you're, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. When you start finding light aluminum, light pennies and that stuff, you, you know, chances are of finding something good are really remote. It's possible, but it's remote. There's a good example of uh, black sand. 
See, the, you know, I'm into a bowl-like area. I'm down to the original. You can see the orange sand. You know, that's the original sand. Look at the black sand that is also there, too. That's really mineralized. And you need a good detector to be able to pick up those deep targets. And you can see I'm right at the edge of the water. As the waves come in, it's filling that hole. And so it makes recovery very, very difficult. But, you know, that's what you have to do. You know, work those hard to get at areas, and you're detecting where other people never, never venture. You know. Okay, what we're looking at here is an area that's just really heavy with targets. It, uh, as you went along, every once in a while you'll find an area that's just loaded. And when you get to that, slow down. As you look at the picture here, most of the targets are in the middle of the beach. They're not up high, they're not down by the water, they're right in the middle, you know. It's just actually a corridor going right along, and everything is dropped right in that area. You know, just grid it off, up and down, go slow. Make sure when, when you're walking, you know, that, that your coil goes right up to your footprints on the other one, so you're almost kind of doubling it. And then when you're done, when you've totally cleaned it out, then do a 180 and go back and forth over the same thing that you've been, and you're going to be amazed at how much stuff you're going to find that you missed on that first time. You know, I used to think I was pretty thorough, but it's amazing how much I'll find on that second trip through. Well, folks, there's always a level of luck involved when you're out there searching for treasure. But if you do your best and you put the odds in your favor, you're limiting that luck. Chances of being successful are so much greater.